What's going on, everyone? Welcome back. Episode 5 of the Cleveland Browns Breakdown. And hey, if you used to some heartbreak, we ain't celebrating today because the Cleveland Browns once again lost in a uh, in a heartbreaker uh, fashion. We're 1-3, and, and I know Dante, he's a little eager to talk about the Cleveland Browns and whose fault it is losing to this Las Vegas Raiders team without Devontae Adams and Max Crosby, their two best players. So, Dante, I'll give you the floor. Let me hear it. Before I start, um, let, me, let me get myself prepared. A little uh, liquid courage to go out the Cleveland Browns? Need the strong stuff for this loss, okay? Remember I told you I bought a Cleveland bottle of bourbon? And every time we win, I was going to pour me a nice uh, drink of it. I've only drank it once. This is not that stuff. So, hey, I'm going to have a full bottle by the end of the season. I hope cool, not. though. Me too. But, hey, by the way the season's gone, I'll have enough for me, you, and another person to be <laughs> to falling onto our faces. So, um, outside of the obvious offensive line issues, dropped passes, defensive lapses, um, penalties. I hate to blame one individual for a loss, but I feel like this one's on Dustin Hopkins. Damn. If we, if we rewind, missed extra point. Mm -hmm. You miss an extra point. Now running the two minute drill field goal is no longer in play. Now you have to score a touchdown. Now, it just lets the defense set up differently. They know, guard the end zone. You know, it's, it, it just set the team up for failure. Now, there were multiple things that went wrong leading up to that point, but if I personally had to pinpoint one part, it's all reliable. Our kicker, he's been the most consistent part of this team. <laughs> yeah. Miss, missing an extra point? Come on, d -hop. like... That, that one hurt. And it's funny because you know when things happen in games and you see moments and you're like, that's going to come back to bite us in the ass. At that very moment, I said, we are going to need that point. That one point we're going to need. And um, we sure as hell needed it. Um, before we even go into any more points, I want to say shout out to Deshaun. He played well. He played a good game today. Hey. He, he played a good game today. You know, it's it's still a little weird because he's not throwing over, you know, 200 yards and it's not flashy. You know, he's just, <clears throat> I hate to say it, I mean, he's a game manager right now. Hey, some of his throws he did make were pretty damn flashy, let me say. I mean, listen, he made some good plays. He did. I mean, hey, I saw one throw where he hit Amari Cooper right in the number two, right here, right where my Ohio State is. And somehow it was intercepted. Oh, where'd it go? Oh, my gosh. Oh, it's going that way now. Damn. Perfect like, ball. Why is Jerry Judy wide receiver one when we have Amari Cooper? Why? Why? I mean, he's been the more consistent wide receiver. It's something that you shouldn't Absolutely. expect out of a Jerry Judy versus Amari Cooper, but he's been the more consistent wide receiver. Yeah, he's been better. He's been better. He has literally been better throughout these first four weeks. Definitely. Speaking about wide receivers, you see uh, Elijah Moore's dad. Not too happy on uh, old Twitter calling out the Cleveland Browns only targeting Elijah Moore one time the whole game. I'm going to be honest, man. I don't even think I heard Elijah Moore's name this game. Like, <laughs> I don't think I heard his name one time. And I think he should be utilized way more. I mean, do we have an identity crisis as an Who offense. are we? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and it, it reminds me of Baltimore on this. Uh, As they're playing right now, it's like some days they give their running game 30 carries. Some days it's 12 to 15. Now, when you're playing catch-up, it's kind of hard to run the ball. But our, I don't want to keep beating a dead horse every week, but, dude, our offensive line is garbage. Oh, my God, it's garbage. Yeah, I mean, it, it doesn't help that. The injury bug decided to, to hit our offensive line only for the most part out of any really other NFL team. I don't think it's uh, been that harsh on an offensive line like ours. Um, especially losing. Staff. <laughs> Is it our training staff? Like, why 
last year, look at what we went through injury wise, IR and all that. And then this year again, like our, <laughs> what's going on with our training staff? Like, what is it? I, I don't know. And I know the biggest thing. I mean, we traded for Nick Harris mid season this year. I mean, in the beginning mm-hmm. of the season, if mm-hmm. we didn't trade for him, we don't even know who the hell we would even have at center to back up Ethan Poshitz. Yeah. Like, we didn't we didn't have a lot of options at all and then having second and third string and fourth string mm-hmm. basically uh linemen out there, that's just a recipe for disaster. So I'm right. surprised we we actually even played that good good offensively with that O line. So let me let's go ahead and uh just what are your key takeaways from this game? Give me one, two, three, how many ever you got. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to hit you with some stats right off the bat. And, uh, I thought of this before the game even started. So a couple of days I, I accumulated, you're going to see this white pop up cause I'm going to have all the stats. This is from yeah. our 2017 Owen 16 Cleveland Browns. This is oh, our boy. first four games. Our total offensive yardage, 1,184. That's 296 yards per game. It's pretty pretty good for being owned 16, right? For our one and three Cleveland Browns, this is including today. First four games, 985 yards. That's 246.25 yards per game. Basically 50 less than the own 16 Browns. That was one Deshaun Kaiser's team. Um, then you go to passing yards. So to see now when when it comes to this, passing yards isn't what the quarterback just threw. This is kind of the uh the team's total passing yards, which which includes the sacks. So if you mm-hmm. get sacked for 10 yards, that takes away 10 of your passing yards. If that makes sense. So yeah, that's yeah. the team total. For the own 16 Browns, 878 for the first four games, 219 per game. The Cleveland Browns, 606. That's 151 per game. So 60 yards more passing through the air with Deshaun Kaiser. Uh, total rushing yards, granted, I believe we probably we probably had a little better offensive line then, but rushing yards, own 16 Browns. I'm not going to give you the total, I'm just going to go by per game now. 76.5 per game, us currently 94.5, so we rush the ball a little bit better, 20 yards or so. Total points, the own 16 Browns, 63 total points, that's 15.75 points per game. Total points for us currently, 66. That's 16.5 per game. So not even one point difference between the own 16 Browns. Now, total touchdowns offensively, just offensively, not defensive touchdowns. For the own 16 Browns, we had eight offensive touchdowns, and we have six for the one and three Cleveland Browns. Um so that's basically two per game for the own 16 and one and a half for us currently. Turnovers, oh, 10 I'm for... I'm just here for it's, Yeah. <laughs> I only got two more uh, stats. Turnovers, it's 10 for the own 16 Browns. It's two and a half per game. We haven't turned the ball over a lot. We only have five. That's 1.25. So we held the ball pretty well. We're not turning it over. And I mean, right. I know two of those interceptions for Deshaun weren't his fault. So actually, we're... Right. we're Doing pretty good with keeping the ball and not turning it over. Last one's the first downs. 81, that's 20.25 per game for the own 16 Browns. And then we have 64, and that is 16 per, uh, per game for the 1-3 and three Cleveland Browns. So pretty identical. And when it comes to the teams that we've played against this year, we've played against the Cowboys, Jags, Giants, and Raiders. Those Jags, Giants, and Raiders are not very good teams, right? They're not great teams. Nope. To where... Nope. Cowboys, you don't know. Now the own 16 Browns, we played the Steelers, Ravens, Colts, and Bengals the first four games. That strength the schedule was harder than what it is currently now with our yeah, for sure. our season. So right then and there, I, I was curious on how bad we were doing offensively, and I wanted to add it up to our worst season as a fucking franchise, and it is not good. So do you think if uh, 2024 Browns played the 2016 Browns, who would win? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm giving us currently the win. Um, I think Deshaun Kaiser is a better, not a better quarterback, not a better quarterback than Deshaun. And I mean... Deshaun versus Deshaun. 
spelled differently for sure. One went to Notre Dame, one went to Clemson. Um, but I think I mean I hope we would win. Um, so is it is it time to panic? Um, it all depends on the injury list. So that we're recording this Sunday night, you know, right after the Browns game. We don't know the injuries with the offensive line, but that's the biggest question. If it's continuously, yeah, you agree, you agree <laughs> with I with the, do that. I just have my arms crossed. With it new, bro, it new with the offensive line issues that we have. If it doesn't get better over time and we don't get healthy throughout the season, it's time to panic because you're not going to have any help with Deshaun at all. You can have all the skill position players that you need, but what makes a team good is you build a team from inside out. That means offensive line and running game. Then you worry about those receivers and extra skill players that you have. If you don't have an offensive line, you're not going to win <laughs> in the NFL. So it's the panic button for the offensive line. I think, I think if you had a good O line, I don't think we would be having these these issues. Um, so I'm an irrational fan. Um, a little wishy washy, you know. Love them, hate them. I've said it before. Um, I'm panicking. I'm panicking um, because we have been blaming everything thus far on Deshaun. Yeah, right. Most people have. And the last two games, he has not played very bad. Like, that that bad. Not his fault. To what like, he's actually getting better every game so far. Now, the, the stat sheet may not reflect that, but looking at the game, he didn't really hold the ball as much today. you seen no. him going through his progressions. He didn't stare anybody down. And then as soon as the pocket broke down, he got out and ran. He didn't try to run laterally and try to extend the play. He ran straight. Let me go get some positive yardage before I take a sack. So you can see his brain and his, uh, his football IQ is starting to come back because before he was just rolling left, rolling right, looking downfield, looking downfield. Now he realizes, I don't have that time. I am shooting through this gap. I'm going to move in the pocket, and I'm just going for positive yardage because he doesn't throw the ball out of bounds often. He does not. So it's either... He throws it, or he's sacked. There's not much in between that. Today, he didn't do that. He ran. He did very well with his legs. I like for him to get down a little bit more. He's taking some hits. You know, he's getting punished. But, I mean, when you don't have Max Crosby coming at you, I know they still have Christian Wilkins. You know, he kind of made that last play happen. He made Deshaun have to roll out. And then once I seen him rolling left, I knew the game was over. Once you're rolling <laughs> yeah. left, you got to do hip. Didn't have the angle. There was a dude in front of him. He's not going to be able to flip his hips and make an accurate throw. I'm like, I looked at that and I was like, yeah, that's game. You know? Yeah. But when the worst player is starting to play really well, up to his standards, he ain't no top five, top 10 quarterback yet. Hell, not even top 15. But he is playing significantly better. When he's playing good and somehow we're looking worse, it, it's panic. The, the issues lie bad. somewhere else, yeah. Exactly. The line is bad. The running game is not existent. Our receivers aren't creating separation. They're not catching passes when it's hitting them. I mean, these two passes in the last two games that have been a detriment to the entire game. Cedric Tillman, I hate to say he lost last game, but eh, you can't it's a, extend it's the game. It's a game-winning game play in a, in a sense, yeah. yes. Yeah, and then Amari Cooper's drop pass a little earlier in the game, third quarter, but that still hurts, man. I mean, he at least is an incomplete pass. You live to see another down. It's not a turnover and getting on the Cleveland Browns territory to where the Raiders are going to eventually it, score on that drive. Exactly. And then the undisciplined penalties. Now, I do, I, I never like to, um, they say you never leave the game in the hands of the referees. But that, what do they call? Um, holding. They call holding. That is one of the worst calls I've seen in a long time. Uh, I mean, that call was bad. I mean, he damn near whiffed and didn't touch the dude. He almost just missed. So, uh, with that, I mean, you heard, I don't know if you listen with announcers, anyone else on, but I was listening with them talking. They were saying it was egregious that it was called, right? And they were looking at it, and they're like, that should not have been. You just took away a touchdown from the Cleveland Browns. 
Mm-hmm. And we did see eventually another angle to where, I mean, you see, you're allowed to hold. You're allowed to hold their jersey yeah. up and underneath you gotta, you wherever know, in front of them. Inside, yes. You just hook, Sometimes you, you don't even have to be inside. You can be on the outside shoulder pads and hold them up right. like this. But once they start to tear off in a certain way, that's when you have to let go. And this one angle, which as a ref, you see it, you probably do throw the flag. It's with his left instead of his right. So he like let go with the right and he's still holding on with his left and it's going through like that when he should have just let go. Mm-hmm. And even though that hold probably wasn't holding him back, just the just you looking like you're holding or gripping onto that jersey, they're going to call. Yep. If you have an open palm, whatever, they're not going to call it. But that's what happened. I mean, Deshaun got hit while throwing that ball. It was perfect. Yeah. Right to Amari. And I mean, that was Zinter, I believe, or was that Nick Harris? No, that was Nick Harris. That was Nick Harris that did it? I'm pretty sure it was Nick Harris, yeah. If it's, if it's Nick Harris, listen, that shit happens. I'm not that upset because he did not come into this year, one, yeah. to be on the Browns. He was on the Seahawks. Two, to be a starting center. He came in to be extra offensive line help to be that fullback mm. in that red zone like he did initially to start the game. Yeah, about the same. My dude's been playing fullback for us. <laughs> yeah, that, I mean, this, we, brought, we brought him back because he played fullback for us before. And um, this is, I don't blame it on him because that shit happens all the time. It just sucked that it yeah. happened on that play. Yeah, I mean, and it's like the refs don't look at it like, oh my God, that was a great play. They scored. Like, we can't call that. Like, it is what it is. They've seen it. I understand the game's bang, bang. <clears throat> it's fast. I get it. You know what I mean? But I felt like it was a kind of like a ticky tack call, you know, kind of like a bad call. But once again, the referees aren't perfect. Human error is going to come into play. It and is that, what it is. Yeah, and that didn't lose us the game. No, it didn't. Dustin Hopkins did. But that's neither. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm not. But um, I even think Kevin Savansky called a pretty decent game. I thought the offensive game plan mm. was not bad. I mean, listen, Deshaun was throwing the ball past the sticks a lot more. Did you notice there was a lot more 10 yard passes out there? It wasn't so many three yard, four yard dump offs. I mean, it eventually I think turned into that. It eventually I mean, turned into that. Because once you're getting pressure with three and you're not blitzing, you're sending four at most. Yeah, and the you're DBs are holding pressure. the sticks. Yeah. You could just draw back. Now you're just you're just playing center field now. Like I don't know. I mean, if he, these are the consistent problems we're gonna have, it's panic mode, man. This season is not gonna get better because of schedule. These these are probably the worst opponents we're gonna face all year long. And if we're looking at the schedule, I'm going to go ahead and pull it up real quick. The, yeah, the first couple games, this this is definitely the worst um, teams that you're going to play to start off. I mean, Dallas, granted, that's Dallas. You expect you expected them to play well. But like you said, the right. Jags, Giants, and Raiders, those should be three wins when you're looking mm-hmm. at it. Yeah, and now, especially with how injured the Raiders were. Um, and then you look at next week, we have the Commanders coming up. The Commanders are hot. <clears throat> they're hot they're yeah, playing like well right now don't that like is it. not like a game that we're just gonna be like oh yeah dub like from the way we've been playing that doesn't look like an easy win and you remember what i said a couple episodes ago after we lost to dallas i talked about how we had the giants the jags the raiders and the commanders so that's four games right there we're already zero and one if we come out of this one and four or even two and three Time to have a separate conversation. Now, granted, it's not about Deshaun anymore. He's, he's on a two-game stretch of playing well. But at this point, we lose to the Commanders, and we're one and four. I don't think you can look at the quarterback position and say, we need to make an adjustment here, because I don't think anybody else can come in and make a difference, because you, you don't have enough time. There's just not enough time. The receivers are not creating separation fast enough for him to be able to stay in the pocket and hope for somebody to be open. And he's not one of those quarterbacks right now that can throw people open either. It's just that he's not that guy. I mean, I, I don't blame, I don't think the receivers aren't getting open. I think it's the fact that even if they do get open, there's someone already in Deshaun's face to where he can't step in and make that throw or yeah. he can't even see yeah. who the fuck is open. 
Yeah, like that that Amari Cooper throw downfield where, you know, Mario Cooper kind of cut in and Deshaun threw it as if it was like a fade pretty much. Um, he was getting hit he, while he threw it. Exactly. And he ripped into Dewan Jones. And listen, I Good. love that. Good. I love that. You know, you're showing fire. Like, because what does everybody say about Deshaun? He's got $230 he million. Care. Dollars. Indeed, he don't care. Well, right there is what you want from your quarterback. He got in Dewan Jones. Right there on the field. Didn't wait. Didn't go to the sideline. He immediately ripped him apart. Because if Dewan Jones' big slow ass would have held that block for one more second, a touchdown. that's a touchdown. That's a touchdown. Because he made a good throw. It just he just had to throw it up there because there was a defender right there immediately. And shout out to Deshaun. I mean, he ripped him off, ripped him out on the field. They went over to the bench and then he was talking in his ear, say, Hey, you know, what whatever he was talking yeah. about. You know, he's arm around being him, that leader. giving him a hug. You know, yeah, because that's the thing. If you have that competitive spirit, how many times we see Tom Brady ripping people's heads off? But every every he, every game, exactly. But he went over there after, coddled him, if you will, put his arm around him, pulled him in tight, and had a conversation with him. You know, like I'm every good quarterback should. And I mean, the I don't think Deshaun. This is kind of going back to you're not throwing wide receivers open. He didn't really throw Jerry Judy open on that one uh, route where Troy Polamalu's fucking nephew almost took Judy's head off. But that deep ball was perfect right in the bucket if that safety wasn't... If that safety was a second yeah. late, that's a catch. Yep. 100%. That was a legit perfect throw by Deshaun, and Deshaun has been throwing the ball really well the past two games, so it's definitely not Dude. on him. And that that's the thing, man. Like, I know this is what Browns fans wanted. The numbers, like I said, the numbers don't reflect the play. He's exactly. still not throwing far downfield, you know, but the thing is, is he's not mm-hmm. turning the ball over two games straight where those interceptions are not on him, not on him at all. That ball to Amari Cooper today wasn't even high. If it's high and it goes over the receiver's head and the safety ends up catching it, I always say that's on the quarterback. You know what I mean? But that was on Amari Cooper. That so, was not on Deshaun. Deshaun has currently, it would be three interceptions on the year. Two of them for sure are not his fault. Yep. And it's like, dog, like looking at what he's working with in the backfield. Receiving core is not bad. Not even going to disrespect the receiving core. Mm -hmm. I like our duo right now, Jared Judy and Amari Cooper. We don't have David and Joku. But the only thing is, is we are hoping and praying that we go to the commanders and then we go to the Eagles and then we're back home for the Bengals. We drop those next two games, and we're now looking at one and five. It, I mean, you're six games in. You only got 11 games left. But what do you, you do? Hopefully, you hopefully have Njoku back. You're hoping Nick Chubb. It looks decent. Looks at least better than Jerome Ford and Dante, and Dante Foreman. You're hoping so. And then you're hoping that maybe Jack Conklin is doing is on the field. Maybe Jedrick Willis is out there. Like, there's hope because of injury that these guys come back. You know, Juan Thornhill's hurt right now. But if we can't grab some of these games now and put those in the win column, it doesn't matter when those dudes come back. The season's going to be too far gone. I mean, you're not getting into the AFC playoffs without 10 wins. I just Uh, don't see it. That's what I, I was just doing math in my head. I said the next 13 games... Minimally, you're gonna have to go ten and three. I think you're gonna then that's ten and three or nine and nine and four, which is still a, a hard feat to do, and that gives you either ten wins or eleven wins, and that's not always and, a uh, secure playoff spot. We've seen teams with ten and eleven wins not make the playoffs before. And in this stretch, like our schedule doesn't get much easier. I mean, outside no. of Commanders, Eagles, Bengals, we go past that. Ravens. Chargers are not looking bad right now. We've lost a worse team so far. After that, we got the Saints. We don't know who they are. They've played good. They've played bad. But they are not a bad team either. The Steelers are rolling. The Broncos have been giving people games. Just beat the Jets today. Yeah, that's, well, that's you know, wild. You know what I mean? Then we got the Bengals again. The Dolphins. By December 29th, two is probably going to be back playing football. The two led Dolphins is a very good football team. The only thing that helps us is that it's a December 29th game at the Browns. So hopefully it's a little cold for Tua. <laughs> That's the only thing we can hope for. Yeah. And then we end with the Ravens. So like Chiefs, Dolphins, Steelers, Ravens, like 
that's a gauntlet of a schedule. Those are not like we, I don't look at any of these games and I say for sure win, for sure win. Like, I don't see any of those games like that. I don't look at the Broncos, the Saints, uh, the Commanders. I don't look at those like win, win. Like, I can honestly, with the way this season is going right now, dude, I can see us literally winning less than seven games. That's how bad it is right now. I, I can see it as well. I mean, this. I texted in the group chat with all of us that this season in general is one of the most unpredictable seasons of football I've ever witnessed uh, to start off. Like you, you mentioned the Broncos, they beat the Bucks and then they beat the Jets. Bo Nix maybe had 60 yards passing and they beat the Jets. Like that is negative, negative yards going into the second quarter, I think. With like five completions. He had five completions for like negative six or nine yards. I forget which one it was. That's crazy. And that's a Jets team. And that's a Jets team that you told me should be above the Ravens in our power rankings. And our Ravens currently squashing the Buffalo Bills. Just saying. Just saying. Uh, I was. I mean, I was hoping, hopefully, like gonna speak it into existence that the Ravens were gonna be terrible. Um, it's obviously not working. Derrick Henry has the longest uh, touchdown from a scrimmage so far this year. It was an eighty-seven yard yep. run. Still got wheels. Yep. I said I was faster yep. than, faster than him. I take yeah, that back, Derek. That. I take that yep. back, Derek. You yep. you don't got a train on your back. You ain't got a yeah. You ain't got a piano on your back, like Shannon Sharp would say. Yeah. Um. To go back to the Browns thing, you talked about coaching and things like that. The one thing that did bother me is when we were moving down the field. This is like right before halftime, and we decided not to kick a field goal. With yeah, we were, Dustin Hopkins. 58, 58, 58, 58, 56, one of the two. Either way, that is a makeable ball for Dustin Hopkins. Let's say it's even 40% or 35% he'll make it. You still should take those chances to get points on the board knowing how our offense has always been playing the past couple games to where it is yeah. tough for us to put points on the board and we still have yet to make 20 plus points in a game. And that's with our I defense mean, scoring I touchdowns. So I didn't love that decision either. I completely agree with you. The only thing I can understand is the fact that our defense had just gave up how many unanswered points, and we didn't look like we could stop a nosebleed in that period. So you go down, you score 10 straight, and then you give up 10 straight. Yeah. And then I think the, was it 10-10 at the time, or was it 17-10 at that time? So it was 10-10 it was at the time, and before that um... – that's when we didn't go for the field goal. We punted, and this was the Raiders. Uh, the Raiders didn't score, and they scored basically right out of halftime. Right. So it, was, so it, 10, it ended 10-10, I think. Yeah, so 10-10, our defense just gave up two consecutive scoring drives, I believe, a touchdown and a field goal. Yep. And you're looking at giving them the ball at midfield. And with going into halftime, and then the Raiders were getting the ball coming out of halftime. Mm -hmm. Yep. They scored a field goal after that. Three, that could possibly be a dagger. You know what I mean? And an offense that can't play catch up. And I think that's just what it was. We are not equipped to play from behind right now. Even though we did today. We did. But with some lucky bounces going our way. You know what I mean? Scooping Legitimately a, a, lu a, a lucky bounce. <laughs> a lucky bounce. You know what I mean? I didn't even think he stayed in bounds when he scored. I was I'm like, surprised oh, he, he did. So I think that was a, a conservative move. And we often, me personally, I often complain about how Kevin Stefanski is too ballsy sometimes. We made the joke about Brandon Staley going for it on fourth down just the other day. And I was like, yeah. Kevin Stefanski needs to do that too. Well, I didn't mind that so much, but I do agree with you. When you're struggling to put up points, I think you should let your kicker try that. Because he was technically the most accurate kicker from 50 out last season, I believe. Yeah, I, I think he made the most. I don't know if he was... The I can't tell. I think Chris Boswell is right there with him, but I mean to go he with was that. Very good from fifty last season. Let's yeah, you're com that. if you're comparing yourself to Chris Boswell, who's been the kicker for the Steelers for how long? You're you're a good mm -hmm. kicker. Um, and I we just had a lot of mental mistakes. I know that right out of the half, Alex Wright, we were going to force basically a three and out for the most part, or maybe it was maybe they got a first down and then we we're going to get a. A stop, but Alex Wright had a roughing the passer on third down, hit Garner like that straight up. You know the head contact, head neck area, yeah. bam, roughing the, the passer. Hit the back, yeah. And then that gives the Raiders the ball, like the Cleveland Browns thirty-five, and they ended up getting a field goal. 
Yep. Like little little mental mistakes like that can lead to it. And then that's when after that we went into our drive and that's the Amari Cooper interception right after that. And it's like, mm-hmm. oh, well, now this is going to be terrible because they go right down and score Trey Turner on like that little yep. jet end around whatever they held they ran. And we're down 10 points right there. And it's like, that this ain't good. And then shout out yep. to uh, to uh, McGuire, McGuire and uh, McGuire. JOK. Well, they forced the fumble, McGuire and JOK, oh, oh. and then McLeod picked it up and and ran it in. Yep. Um, and that that gave us a little bit of hope until yep. your your best friend Dustin uh, shanked it. Cost me fifteen bucks today. <laughs> I mean, I think he I think he'd pay you fifteen bucks just to make it. So, hundred percent, he'd probably pay me fifteen thousand to make it with his salary. So probably. Um. So. We got good news. Um, Batman is expected to practice this week. Uh, our savior, Nicholas Chubb, St. Nick. Hopefully it is Christmas. Before we go to that, can I, can I complain about our fourth down play that we drew up? The last play of the game? Yeah. Go ahead. So, I mean, to start off with that, Nick Harris on that drive snapped it before Deshaun was ready. I mean... I'm surprised that didn't happen more often with mystic changes with a dude that you probably never took snaps with. <laughs> so I'm not surprised about that. That still sucks. You lose it down right there. Then we eventually get to fourth down. If he did have a little more time, Jerry Judy was going to be open running basically a dig route or a, a deep, a deep in for the most part. It was him and Elijah Moore on the right side, but our routes that we ran besides Elijah Moore were all in the end zone when we needed three yards to get the yeah. first down with three timeouts, two timeouts, two timeouts, because yeah. we had to take one. Kevin, draw something up to get the first down. We don't need to take a shot in the end zone. Why are we having these deep, long routes to get receivers open to where when we know we don't have the offensive line to hold? Like, yeah. and I, I'm reliving that clip in my head to where Dante Foreman... Uh, Deontay, Dante, whatever you want to call him. Foreman is sitting there. He doesn't block anybody. He's supposed to basically chip and kind of release out to the flats to the right side. When he's chipping or looking to, for someone to block, there's no one in that hole where he's looking. Mm-hmm. So he kind of just releases. So everyone's going to be on Deshaun's left side. And as soon as he sees one dude come to the right, he's forced left, but everyone else is to the left and he has nowhere to go. And like you said, yep. once he rolled out right or left, and sideways it's you can't turn and adjust that throw i seen someone on twitter have a still frame of deshaun saying terrible decision making or something about him not throwing to uh someone that was running the out route to the left basically on the hash hash marks forget who that was and then the jerry judy but for him to even make that throw would have been impossible because he won wouldn't have enough time to even adjust and throw it exactly like, and like they can be open under, he can't throw it yeah, to him yeah don't underestimate one how close that team. defensive lineman is to him and you could literally see deshaun's face and his like his emotion he literally knew at that moment it's over like he was trying and he did he flipped his hips and he lifted his arm to throw it and literally as he lifted his arm and put him uh, six inches closer to the defender and that allowed the defender to get to his arm and now it's over like so, so he, regardless going. of who was open or whatever you can't go left and just flip your hips and throw it in an instant like I think people are completely underestimating running at a full sprint to your left trying to flip your hips to get your body square to throw a ball across your body like it just doesn't work like that so I just got Sure you said. The picture that people are showing, right? Um, this is this is what we're looking at. Mm-hmm. And his first read is that dude that's basically running that deep left out, right? Mm-hmm. Obviously, he's seen it to where that's gonna be a tough throw because that DB has inside leverage right there, or outside leverage to where he's running right to the DB. That DB is gonna he's an athlete. He's going to make that play. It's not like he hasn't beat anywhere. And he's Uh, already facing the direction, too. 
So it's not like he has to turn his body. He's literally facing to where the receiver is going. So he has just a straight shot. Yeah, exactly. And when it goes to like the Elijah Moore on the right side, it looks like he's running that zig route. Elijah Moore, if you watch that playback, he's not getting that ball. Like they're, he's, he actually comes back to the left to where the linebacker is going to be, I believe. And the linebacker is sitting right there. You're not going to make that completion to Elijah. Eventually, if he had time, that Jerry Judy right down the middle, when he turns it back inside, that's a completion. But if you zoom in and you see these dudes, I'm going to turn this volume down, this light down. You see those two guys in yep, the front. Lurking. This dude's splitting two to two offensive linemen. Deshaun's not going to... He can't look this way, turn, and throw in time before he gets hit. So that is not on Deshaun for the people that are hitting and, on Deshaun. And you can do a still shot of every play. Yes. Be a guy, appear to be open. Appear. Let's not underestimate how fast the game of NFL football is played and how athletic these dudes are. Because for a split second, everyone is open at some point. But is the quarterback able to get the ball in that tight window in that short second of a time? And no. A lot of times, it, they can't. They, like, they, like, and I, I hate still pictures like that because that's not truly what the story is. And I, and I, you could do that with every play. And like... This is the thing. I mean, you even in that still frame, you see where uh, Jerome Ford, I think it might be, that's leaking out. It wasn't Dante Foreman. He's leaking out to the mm-hmm. right side. Um, still, wouldn't have enough time. But also, that play that you're, everyone's looking at, everyone's heading to the end zone right now, basically. Amari's going to get strapped up on the left side. They're looking at Amari the whole time. That's yeah. what the defense is thinking. They're who they're going to go to. We got Aikens running a deep out towards the end zone. We got Judy running the deep end towards the end zone. And then we got Elijah Moore. Basically, he's going to be double covered by that linebacker and that other DB that's on him. So realistically, we only had one wide receiver and Elijah Moore that ran a short route, not including the running back, because he wouldn't even have enough time to get it to him. Right. Why? Why? Why are we all right. run into the end zone? That that was my question. Now, I think that was a terrible play call by Stefanski. I mean, if the line held up... Yeah. It would have been a touchdown, but you should have known that the line wouldn't have held <laughs> held it. So right. we can go back right. to your Nick Chubb coming back. I'm sorry. I just had to get that off my chest. No, you're good. I mean, like there's hopefully light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, he's going to practice this week. Doesn't necessarily mean he's going to play. He can still get rolled out. It depends on how he looks. I'm sure at this point they kind of knew the timeline of when he was going to be ready. And it seems as though he will be. We don't know yet, but I do think having... Just the name in the backfield. Just the name. I think that will help because Nick Chubb breaks. How many times have you seen us break 12, 15 yard runs so far this season? Not often. Jerome Not Ford often. had one today. So he had a good one today. Yeah, he did. And that, that and, was, <laughs> that's one. And it was, and, like, no, and no offense to who we had. I was excited about Dante Ford. Me and you talked about it. I was excited about it. And Troy Ford isn't bad. He's a serviceable backup. I don't think he's a great starter. But when you have a dude who has been averaging five point, I think six, maybe five point eight yards a carry over his career, he's in the top five in yards per carry in NFL history. Even though he had a major injury, I think having him in the backfield not only gives the team confidence, even though the offensive line is garbage still. He has the ability to do what those guys cannot. That's why he is Nick Chubb. And they're them. 5.3 yards per carry, by the way. There you go, 5.3. I gave him a little bit more. Sorry, everybody. Um, I do think that that does help, and that gives the team a boost in morale. Hopefully, Njoku's back next week as well. That's also a possibility. It just gives the team a morale boost because we're going to need that versus Commanders because that's a piping hot team. And Jaden Daniels is completing 82% of his passes. 82%. And he, and he can run. He's a good runner. And we don't do well versus scrambling quarterbacks. We don't. Uh, Book Jake Bands for an anytime touchdown probably this week. 
Bro, I mean, question. basically every week he gets an anytime touchdown. Well, I bet it today and it hit, so. Yeah. Um, I was just looking at the standings with the AFC North. I mean, you got the, the Steelers dropped one to the Colts. Um, mm-hmm. I'm still not, their offense still doesn't look great. I know if you look at the box score, it looks like Justin Fields had a, had a day, right? But mm-hmm. watching the game, he had a lot of, uh, a lot of mistakes. Justin Fields, yeah. the Chicago Bear type mistakes to where he's trying to extend plays and losing the ball. Yep. Um, he's going to get hurt too, man. He keeps taking those big hits. He's going to get hurt. Tell yeah. nah, I was today. He's going to get hurt, man. So I'm not scared of the Steelers offense. I mean, it's their defense that keeps them in games. It's similar to us right now. It's just we didn't capitalize on offense like the Steelers did a couple of times in their couple right. of games to where they didn't even need to get a fucking touchdown against the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, but Steelers, they're three and one. The Ravens looking like they're going to be two and uh, two and two. They're up twenty one to three uh, against the Bills at the half. Um, and then you got the Browns and Bengals at one and three. So our division going to be pretty tough um to it even like you, to make you like you said to make the playoffs it's going to be rough too because you're going to have the bills that have three wins even if they lose this week you got the jets the dolphins the chiefs the chargers steelers ravens texans maybe colts if you want to throw in there that's a lot of teams in the afc that can can knock you out of the the playoff uh bracket sorry there's a bug in my basement did you catch it? No, it's on my headphones. It's gone. <laughs> Distracted Swirl. Dante. Um, <laughs> but I mean, we. what's crazy to think about it in the AFC North uh, rankings, you see the points for, like we have 66 points like that we put up. Last place, the Bengals have 102. They scored, they scored the most points, but gave up the most points, 104. To where they statistically they have a better offense than everyone in the <laughs> in there, but I mean that's despite Ravens game isn't over yet, so that's not including that. Right. But it's gonna be Ra- It's gonna be Bengals, Ravens, Steelers, Browns, and offensive rankings. Mm-hmm. The Bengals, they're still good. They just give up a lot of points too. Yeah, the defense is garbage. Um, I don't even want to predict. Or even talk about expectations for next week, like because I, I like at this point, I'm gonna be honest with you, Derek. I don't know. Like, I don't even know what this team could do different from this week to next week to make an improvement. Because I think um, I don't know what the the Commanders' defensive line looks like. I don't know how much they blitz. I don't know what their front looks like outside of um, Deron Payne. And uh, mm-hmm. is his name? Yep. I don't know if his name. Outside of Payne, I'm just going to say Payne. And then outside of uh, Jonathan Allen, can give you another lineman on that team defensively. So I, I don't even know if they're going to be blitzing. I mean, if you are playing the Browns, I would blitz the hell. I would, I'm sending the house almost every single play. And you, uh, they should. They should. You know, so offensively, the commanders are hot. Defensively, where? Kind of Jekyll and Hyde, start a little slow, pick up a little later. You know what I mean? We get some stops, we don't. You know, we're, we're not terrible. Yeah, we're not yeah. terrible. So going against rookie quarterbacks, you know, typically we're pretty good. I remember Miles Garrett almost killed Justin Fields in his first start versus us. So you know, I think he had five sacks. It was maybe four. Who knows? Yeah, he don't um, two today. So we'll see, um, dude. Like I said, I'm I'm panicking. So it's like. I'm not even convinced any game is a win anymore. Yeah, it's, so, it's, uh, yeah, it's going to be rough going into it. Most likely, Martin Emerson might be out concussion protocol. Mm-hmm. You never know how that goes. Um, yeah, I, I know we didn't really get to talk about it, but the the Browns' defense this year is not what the Browns' defense was last year. I don't nope. know what happened, back, especially back with almost everybody. Yeah, wait, legit everybody. The, the same scheme too. So I don't know. What's going on with the DBs with Denzel, Martin, and uh, Greg? But we had the best corner room in the whole league last year. I still think we have a great corner room, but we're not playing to the caliber that we did. So yeah. it, it does scare me going into, into next week. Um, 
And then, like we said, we talked about it so many times. The biggest thing is the offensive line. So we're not getting any any more healthy on that offensive line. I don't expect us to put up very many points uh, on there. We're going to have to rely on our defense to put us in good field position and just kind of execute from there. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, next week we're just gonna we're just gonna have to see, you know, we're just gonna have to figure it out. Hopefully, it goes well. That, that's all I gotta say about next week. Um, any any closing remarks from you? Um, hopefully we get healthy. Hopefully Nick Chubb can play. Hopefully Njoku's feeling up to play. Even though Agans is not playing bad in his absence, there's just not the same. Um, you know, hopefully Juan Thornhill gets a little healthier. Hopefully, Jack Conklin, Jed, those guys get healthier. But at this point, dude, it's like, just hopefully yeah. we get healthy. I mean, that was a story last year. Shout out White Hart getting a, uh, his first Cleveland Browns touchdown as a tight end. I, I don't nice remember. Wide Deshaun was, you know, he him, read that him, play. Well. Him or Swam or Swaim were both open. <laughs> they both could have caught that. <laughs> um, but for everyone that is watching, if... We might be able to do this every Sunday night or whatever day the Cleveland Browns do play a couple hours later. Uh, let us know if you prefer us to do this as like a little live stream so you can kind of talk to us uh, while we, you know, go on and talk about it a little bit. And uh, cool. we we want to hear your comments, your thoughts down below. So definitely tell us if we're hating a little too much or we're not hating a lot on Deshaun. Maybe you think Deshaun is the problem. Maybe you think we should... Uh, or- or, or like our YouTube comment, the dude told us that uh, clearly we don't know anything about football. Did you see that one? I did see that one, and I was like, that's weird, because uh, I watched every snap, and I go back and actually rewatch them, too. Um, mm-hmm. Shout out to, your, to Mike, your boy Mike, um, on Twitter. He said, yep. void the contract. Nah, listen, I am, um, this is me shutting the imaginary door. <laughs> I just closed it. On benching Deshaun right now. He's getting better every game. I don't care what anybody says. The stats may not reflect it. He is playing better every game. So for now, imaginary door, shut on benching him. And to your point, I mean, this is everyone that commented on our Twitter thing, only two people so far. So that goes to your point with at Cavs winning chip. He said Watson actually looked good today. Many critical plays that were called back and the timeout we didn't need a call there. I feel like once our line gets healthy, we'll be just fine. So that kind of two contradicting comments back 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 towards each other. So everyone's going to have different opinions and we want to hear. Them. Hey, listen, either we're going to suck enough for Shador or we're going to suck just enough for Cam Ward. Who knows? I don't or, think we're going to suck enough. Worse, but we'll see. Okay, okay, okay. Not Cam. No, okay. no, he's going to the Panthers. Right. He's going to the Panthers. Let us hear your predictions down below against Washington. Hopefully, we go out and win. Uh, hopefully, you don't watch our predictions videos because I said if the Browns lost this week, I'm picking against them every week. So from here on out, I'm picking against the Browns because I get my heart broken every year. You catch it? I didn't catch that one. All right. Peace out, everyone. Like, subscribe, comment. We'll see you next week when the Cleveland Browns beat the shit out of the Washington Commanders.